Welcome to our latest Heart Shapers assembly. I hope you've enjoyed the ones that we've done so far. Uh, this week we're looking at Joseph in Egypt. You remember it's part two of our Joseph series. Uh, so what have we seen so far? Well, firstly, when we looked at Abraham, we saw that God can be trusted. In the first part of Joseph, we saw that God is in control. And today we're going to see that God helps us to serve. Do you help others? Maybe at home, maybe at school. And how do you help others? Maybe pause the video for a moment now and have a discussion with your teachers about whether you do and how you help other people. I hope as you had that discussion with your teachers that you did come up with lots of ideas for helping others. The word that the Bible uses a lot for helping is serving. And we're going to see that today. Today we're going to see the next part of Joseph's story and we're going to see him serving in Egypt. Well, that is helping others in Egypt. Can you remember where we left the story last time and what has happened so far? Again, why don't you pause the video and check out with your teachers what happened last time and why that happened. Did you remember everything that happened in our first part of Joseph? Did you remember about his brothers and the fact that they were jealous of him? And why were they were jealous of him? They decided to kill him, didn't they? They beat him up and threw him in a hole. But Reuben, one of the, his brothers, convinced them not to kill him. Instead, they sold him into slavery in Egypt. A dreadful thing to do. Really sad that they hated him so much that they sold him into slavery. Last time I said that God is in control. That's what we were learning with part one. Even though it didn't seem like it, did it? So let's see what happened to Joseph when he got to Egypt. Here's a, a short video clip for you to see the story so far. God's story, Joseph. So part of God's story is about a guy named Joseph and it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Joseph who had 10 older brothers and one younger one. When Joe was a boy, he was his dad's favorite. In fact, his dad liked him so much better than his brothers that he gave Joe a special gift to prove it. You can imagine this made his brothers jealous. And Joe only made things worse. He told his brothers about dreams he had where he was ruling over them. Well, this made Joe's brothers furious. One day they were working and saw Joe coming. They said, here comes that dreamer. They threw Joe into a dark pit. They might have left him there forever, but they met some men traveling from Egypt and sold Joe to them as a servant instead. They thought that was slightly nicer than leaving him in a pit. Then they went home and told their father Joe had been killed by a wild animal. This broke their dad's heart. Kids, these brothers were really bad news. Selling a sibling is never a good idea. Ever. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joe. When Joe was a servant, he worked for a really important rich guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of the whole house. Joe was happy until one day he was blamed for something he didn't do, and Potiphar sent him straight to jail. Well, God was still with Joe, even in prison. The guard decided he liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Then God gave Joe special knowledge about dreams. When two prisoners had dreams, Joe knew what they meant, so he told them. Two years later, Egypt's ruler called Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody knew what it meant. But by now, one of the two prisoners Joe had helped was out of jail and working for Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh about Joe, and God helped Joe figure out what Pharaoh's dream meant. But Pharaoh's dream was really more of a nightmare. It meant that everybody in Egypt would have food for seven years, then be hungry for seven years. Joe told Pharaoh the only way to survive was to store food during the seven good years. Well, Pharaoh thought Joe's idea was brilliant. He put him in charge. During the seven hunger years, nobody could eat without getting food from Joe. He was like a human vending machine. Well, remember how Joe had 11 brothers? Like everybody else, they had to get food from Joe. And when they came, they didn't even recognize their brother. Wow, did you expect that? If you could ask Joseph a question at this point, what would you ask him? 
why don't you pause the video and share with your teachers the questions that you might have. And, and if you would like me to answer some of your questions, then why not get your teachers to email me with those and I'll send you back a reply from what I know. So when Joseph arrived in Egypt, he became a servant to Potiphar. The Bible tells us this is what happened when he was there. And he was an important man, Potiphar. Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph. He saw that the Lord made Joseph successful in everything he did. Well, it wasn't long after Joseph was working for Potiphar and actually became really influential in his house, really important in his house, that he was blamed for something that he didn't do. I wonder if that's happened with you. But he was put in prison for it. The Bible then tells us what happened to him in prison and it says this. The warden of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord made Joseph successful in everything he did. That keeps coming up, doesn't it? The Lord was, uh, made sure that he was successful in everything he did. Oh, this is a great story and there's so much in the story in the Bible. We're not able to cover everything. We can only do it briefly. So why don't you afterwards have a look at the full story in the Bible? Then the story goes on. Then Pharaoh, who was in charge in the whole of Egypt, he was the man that was like the king in Egypt. He had two very worrying dreams and no one could tell him what they meant except, well, who do we know who can understand dreams? Can you remember what Pharaoh's dream was? It was a strange one, wasn't it? Maybe you have strange dreams sometimes. Well, the dream was that there were seven fat cows followed by seven thin cows. Then the thin cows ate the fat cows. Whoa, that's seriously weird, isn't it? Well, the dream was a warning from God. And it meant that Egypt and the countries near them would have seven good years of harvest, loads of, of crops, followed by seven years, unfortunately, of famine, where there wouldn't be any food. Have you heard that word famine before and what it means? Well, it means that there's not enough food or enough crops for anyone. In fact, the crops won't grow. So it was a very bad situation. What would Pharaoh and Egypt do? There didn't seem to be anyone who knew what the dream, dream meant. Or is there? Remember we learnt last time that God is in control. The Bible tells us that God knew what would happen and he had a plan. If you're like me, perhaps you, were one, you wondered how God could be in control, especially with the things that had happened to Joseph. Well, Joseph was a big part of God's plan, and now he was in the best position to save the day. Now we can see that although Joseph had some really hard things to cope with, he ended up using his gift from God, of knowing what dreams mean, to become Pharaoh's most important leader. Well, that's a great story, isn't it? But what question do we always ask towards the end of our assembly? It's my... So what? So what? What can we do with all that story? Well, I think firstly, we can see that Joseph trusted that God was in control. Do you know, God loved that. We can also see that Joseph served and helped everyone in every situation he was in, even when it was hard. Do you know, God loved that too. Do you know, God loves to see us serve as well. He loves to see us helping others in any way we can. So will you do all you can to serve and help others today and this week? Well, we're going to sing in a moment, but before we sing, let's pray. And it, as I usually say, if you agree with my prayer, as I say it, if you want that prayer to become yours too, just say Amen at the end. So put your hands together and close your eyes. Thank you for your word in the Bible. And particularly the things we can learn from the story of Joseph. Thank you, too, that the Bible teaches us that you are in control, even when it doesn't seem you are. Please help us to see when and how we can serve and help others every day. Amen. 
We're going to finish with a song. The song's called Good or Bad. If you aren't able to sing, then maybe you can do some actions. I'm very happy for you to make your own actions up, but there are four words that come a lot in this song. They are good. You might want to do the thumbs up action for good. There's also bad. Sometimes good things happen. Sometimes bad things happen. You might want to do thumbs down for bad. Then whether you're happy, the big smiley face, you might want to exaggerate your, fa your smiley face with your hands. Or whether you're sad, you might want to droop your mouth down and look down a little bit and be sad. Whatever, whether you're good or bad, happy or sad, the song says that God is always there. God is always there, especially for those who love him. So I hope you enjoy the song. I hope you've enjoyed the assembly. Uh, I will see you hopefully again soon with another one of our Heart Shapers assembly. Take care. God is there too.